The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, it's Steve Anderson from the Crown Council and welcome to our webinar today. We're just a couple of minutes before start time. And uh, so I wanted to do a few announcements as you're settling in and getting ready for our, our webinar today. I am excited to have uh, with us Jack Hadley from My Social Practice, who I'll introduce formally here in just a moment. Uh, for those of you uh, just joining us, uh, quick update on the Smiles for Life campaign which is well underway for this year. Uh, to date, we are nearly $200,000 uh, ahead of last year, the same time last year. So uh, Smiles for Life is off to a great start with great participation and uh, great enthusiasm from all over the country. So for those that are participating in the Smiles for Life campaign, thanks for everything that you're doing to make it happen and for all of your contribution. It is uh, going great with lots more to come. Uh, we're excited for this year's Young Dentist, uh, Crown Council Young Dentist Program, uh, which launched at the annual event in February. They'll be meeting again here shortly. And uh, we are have already started enrollment for the Young Dentist Program 2020, which will start in January of next year. Uh, for more information on that, you can go to youngdentistprogram.com. Uh, anyone that has been out of school five years or less qualifies for that amazing program uh, that is almost at no cost. It's a great clinical program led by Dr. David Hornbrook and a team of amazing clinicians. Uh, so any young dentists or those that you know, youngdentistprogram.com uh, is the place to find out more and to register for 2020. Uh, it's Crown Council annual event uh, coming up January of 2020. It will be the 25th annual event of the Crown Council, which promises to be an amazing experience. Uh, we have had record number of pre-registrations. Uh, confirmations for those will go out on May 15th if you've already pre-registered. Uh, and you can register today. The event will sell out, we know that. Uh, more information, ccannualevent.com if you have not registered yet. We highly recommend it. So you can uh, grab a seat uh, while they're still available. Uh, finally, we'll talk a little bit more about this today, is the Dental Digital Marketing Conference 2019. Uh, October 3rd and 4th in Salt Lake City, or just outside of Salt Lake City. Uh, Jack will talk a little bit more about that. This uh, it has become an annual uh, conference. This will be the fifth time that uh, we've done this meeting and uh, promises to have the latest in digital marketing and dentistry and, and uh, everything that's going on in terms of the best ways to attract new patients. Uh, you can go to dentalmarketingconference.com for more information on the Dental Digital Marketing Conference 2019. So with that, we are ready to start our webinar. Uh, more new patients now. Uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, you are in listen-only mode. You should be able to hear me loud and clear. Uh, we cannot hear you. That's to eliminate any background noise and make it easy for everyone to listen and to gain as much as they can from today's webinar. You are welcome at any time to uh, submit questions in the question bar in your control panel that is on your computer, and we will uh, address those questions at the end of the planned presentation. So feel free to submit those. We usually go through those uh, as <clears throat> in the order that they came in. So anything that you'd like more clarification on, you are welcome to submit those in your question bar. Uh, we often get asked if this webinar is being recorded, and yes, it is. And it will be posted at crowncouncil.org in the uh, under the training tab in the webinars section uh, later today. That usually takes us about an hour uh, to go through and get everything posted and up. So. Uh, there will be a lot of information here that you'll want other team members in your practice to be able to gain from. So you're welcome to go to crowncouncil.org uh, where the recorded webinar will be posted later today. So with that, 
Uh, more new patients now. Rarely uh, do I have uh, people that say they have no more room for new patients. And uh, if if that is your case, then we have a different webinar for you. And uh, so I'm I'm delighted to have Jack Hadley with us today. Jack is a partner at my social practice, who is the leader in social media marketing and dentistry. Uh, and uh, Jack and my social practice have been huge, huge contributors to the Smiles for Life campaign. Uh, for many, many years, producing all of the marketing and social media materials for that campaign. And uh, a huge part of the success of Smiles for Life is due to the great work that my social practice does. So Jack, welcome and thanks again for all of your great contribution and everything you do to make Smiles for Life uh, a big success. And as I mentioned earlier, we are well ahead of where we were last year at this time. And uh, I know you're going to talk about a little bit about how to leverage Smiles for Life in your new patient activities. So welcome. Great. Thank you, Steve. It's uh, my pleasure to be here and our team's pleasure to work on Smiles for Life. Thank you for inviting me today. I'm excited to be here. You bet. We're looking forward to your genius here in just, in just a few minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start first, uh, and, and here's kind of the sequence of events uh, today in terms of the content that we're going to cover. We're going to talk a little bit about new patient philosophy, uh, when, then we're going to talk about some systems, and this will be very systematic uh, today. I'm going to walk through some things that should be done every day in your practice. Jack is going to talk about uh, some systems that will help you leverage your new patient efforts that are daily systems as well. So you will walk away from today's webinar with specific things that you can do on a daily basis that will influence and impact your new patient efforts. We're going to give you some specific tools today that you'll be able to use to increase new patient flow and capture more of the new patient opportunities that come in on a daily basis. And I'll also share common patient questions uh, that come in as someone is trying to enter the practice that many times create barriers to creating a new patient. We'll deal with a handful of those with some specific suggestions on how you field those questions so that those turn into new patient opportunities instead of a barrier to entry. First off is philosophy. And yes, I do realize that philosophy is not spelled with an F, but in this webinar it is. And this is what I call the funnel philosophy, a word picture to start us out today. So uh, if you picture a funnel, uh, the, the neck of, or excuse me, the, the open part of the funnel represents all of the prospective patients that are in your uh, potential marketplace. And we're going to talk about how to increase the top of that funnel so that there's more opportunities every day to create more patients. Then, as we move down into the neck of the funnel, that eventually creates those that will become active patients. So if you use that as a word picture, there's plenty of prospects out in your marketplace. We know that in America today, roughly 50% of the population does not go to the dentist on a regular basis. So if we were to tap into that market, those that don't actively go, there would be a mass shortage of dentists across the country. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how you harness the tools that you have already to capture more of those people, as well as how you capture more that move down the neck of that funnel, funnel to create more active patients. So our objective today is to open the neck of the funnel to create more opportunities, which will eventually create then more active patients. So here is the first philosophy. If you spent any time with us at all over the years, uh, you know this purpose, what we state is an active purpose of the practice on a daily basis, regardless of your position, and your job description in the practice, it is everyone's responsibility to create happy paying patients who repeat and refer and pay more than it costs to serve them. So no matter your job description, whether you answer the phone, whether you're the dental assistant, you're in hygiene, you're the dentist, everyone has that common purpose is to create a happy paying patient at every patient encounter. Jack and I will both share today opportunity 
opportunities that can be taken advantage of by anyone, any position in the practice to create more happy paying patients. That's part of everyone's job description. Every opportunity that you have every day, and we'll walk through a number of those, is a golden opportunity to capture more people that can become active patients in your practice. There are no bad opportunities, some better than others, and we're going to show you some new ways today how to capture some of those opportunities and leverage them to reach an even broader audience. Systems. Uh, we're going to talk about some systems today to create more opportunities, and here is a reminder of the first one that is a daily habit. This is what we call the two by two in your MOM. So this is a habit in your morning opportunity meeting. Uh, if you've spent any time with us at Total Patient Service or in the Crown Council in the past, you know that we call it the morning opportunity meeting, not your morning huddle, but a morning opportunity meeting because it is prime time to identify opportunities that you will have today and tomorrow to create more patients, to create more case acceptance and more opportunities to do what you do best. So we have over the years trained what we call the two by two method, <clears throat> which is for starters, when you go over your results from yesterday, is to report on the two patients that you asked for referrals and that's our recommendation. The two by two method is two reviews and two referrals every day. <clears throat> there may be more opportunities than that, but you're going to identify two every day in each of those areas. And then the next morning report back to the team on that effort and what the result was. So someone will be assigned to ask for those referrals, those chair side referrals from patients, as well as to ask for two reviews, two online reviews. Again, there's always more opportunities than just two, but you'll identify two every day and you'll report on those from the previous day. So in the beginning part of your morning meeting, what were the results yesterday of asking for two reviews and two, re uh, two reviews and two referrals? Then as you move on to your agenda for today, again, part of your agenda will include the same. Who are the patients that we're gonna ask for referrals today? Asking for two specific referrals. And who are we going to ask for reviews today? Two patients. So those would be patients that have had a great experience in your office that you've identified as having a potential sphere of influence where they could then refer other people or leave a great online review. So that's what we call two by two, two reviews and two referrals. What we've found is with the great software that's out there, for example, for online reviews, it's very effective. And the review effort can be compounded exponentially with a focused and a personal ask with specific patients. Many times with the focus on online reviews, referrals get left behind and we forget to ask about those. So that's why we say two referrals and two reviews every day uh, that you'll, and you'll identify those in your morning meeting. Now to that two by two formula today, we are going to add now another opportunity that Jack is going to share with us, which is to identify potential stories stories that you can uh, use to leverage your marketing efforts that will bring in even more new patients. So with that, Jack, I'm going to hand it over to you to share with us a strategy that can dramatically expand the reach of the funnel. Great. All right. Can you see my screen okay? Love it. All right, great. Well, thank you, Steve, again, for inviting me. And, uh, and what a great introduction to what we're talking about today. I, I've learned so many things from, uh, from Steve and the Crown Council and the TOPS uh, folks in his team. And I just uh, really appreciate the relationship that my social practice has with you. So thank you for including us today. Thank you. I, uh, I learned long ago 
in design school that quote simple pictures are best <laughs> and and so i'm i'm a whiteboard guy i uh, i have several whiteboards in my office and they're always full of things and moving around with stuff and and so i i had a few thoughts so uh, as we were preparing for today and and i wanted to start off with a really uh, kind of simple diagram to to segue from from your visit about uh, the two by two uh, during the morning opportunity meetings. What's interesting to me is that um, the TOPS Institute and the Crown Council talk a lot about the culture of success. And when you talk about the culture of success in the context of marketing and in the context of growing your dental practice, there is a, a bit of a disconnect between those fundamental truths and the top of this little pyramid you're looking at, which is the places where you typically spend money to market your practice, whether it's SEO, PPC, or running ads, whatever that looks like in your practice, there's, there's this gap. And, and there aren't the opportunities created to be able to leverage the things that are happening inside the practice that have to do with the, the culture of the practice that connect to these marketing efforts. And so in the old days, we didn't have any opportunity to bridge that gap. There was no way that we could publicly manifest the things that were going on in the practice that lead to new patient acquisition. For example, if, something, if you were taught a great skill about asking for two referrals or asking uh, about a couple of new patients or get reviews, there was no way to, to push that out. I guess you could call the local newspaper and go spend $2,000 and run, run an ad in the newspaper, but, but there, was no, there was no middle ground. There was nothing that you could do that was, that was effective and economical and easy team to do. But today, we have this opportunity to use social media as this bridge. And I like to think about it as, you know, you build the culture of your practice and then you share that practice culture and you manifest it publicly through social media. And, and I think it's the greatest opportunity dental marketing has, has ever had. Um, I, often when I get a chance to lecture, I like to remind dental practices that they are relationship-based businesses. And there are so few of those in the world. If you think about it, there's so few businesses that enjoy that blessing of of sitting face to face with people and knee to knee and hand to mouth and eye to eye. And, and hopefully people are coming through your door twice, at least twice a year to sit with you and, and you can put your arm around them and you can, you have this great opportunity that very few businesses have. And, and so that's why social media is so effective for dental practice and how it becomes that bridge that really helps in these marketing efforts. So what I wanted to do today in light of that little diagram was to just talk about five quick points uh, as a little contribution to the things that Steve's talking about today. And then we're going to turn it back over to Steve to wrap all this back up. But So let me go through these five ideas that I had. Uh, Steve already touched on the first one, and it's a global idea, which is be sure to always use your greatest tool. And what is your greatest tool? <laughs> well, he just talked about it. It's that thing you stare at every day. It's not Facebook, it's not YouTube, it's not Instagram, it's not Instagram stories, it's not running ads. Your greatest marketing tool, in my opinion, for a relationship-based business like a dental practice is that schedule that you stare at. And, and Steve talked about looking at, at who's came in yesterday and who's coming in today and identifying those opportunities. I'd like to expand that challenge to you and say, I want you to look back a month I want you to look back through the last 30 days and I want you to look at those opportunities to ask happy, satisfied, paying patients to talk about how you changed their life. Now, I know changing lives isn't something that happens every day. You're probably thinking, oh, Jack, that doesn't happen every day. Most of the day it's just routine, blah, blah, blah. But, but I'm sure if we looked at your schedule in every one of your practices and went back 30 days or 60 days or whatever, we'd find two or three places where you truly changed a life. And, and so identifying those patients and then putting your arm around them and asking them to help tell the story of your culture and your practice and why they love who you are is a great opportunity. 
which leads to number two, helping a patient share a story. I want to show you two quick examples of two practices that did, have done a recent and amazing job of asking patients to help, help them grow their business by telling a story. Um, our good friends at Davis Dental Center out in Louisville, uh, they had a, a, a patient who posted on her personal page and then tagged the practice a post about some gum contouring work that uh, the practice had done to help her. I can never say thank you enough to the amazing team at Davis for helping me with my smile. Today was my last day of treatment. The results have truly changed my life or are life changing for me. Now, she, you can see up at the top, I circled her page because this was originally posted on her page. So you want to ask your patients if they, would, if they were willing to tell their story, the best place for them to tell it is on their own page because that's where more people are going to see it than originating it on your page. And then, of course, when they tag you, as you can see there above her photos, it says Christina Davis with a little arrow to Davis Dental Center. That means that she tagged the Davis Dental Center. And she went on to tell this nice little story about what happened there. And a few of her friends chimed in. The practice, Davis Dental Center, chimed in. And this lovely little impromptu conversation took place on Christina's page. So when Christina posted it, it ended up over on visitor posts on the practices page because she tagged the practice. But in addition to showing up under visitor posts, there was one important share of Christina's post. And I'm sure you can guess who or what <laughs> that important <laughs> share was. That important share was from Davis Dental Center. They went in and shared Christina's post and added one little comment. This is why we do what we do. What an, a, a, an easy and simple way to add your perspective as a practice to her experience to strengthen this story. So let's pretend that I'm a, a potential new patient and I wind up on Davis Dental Center's Facebook page. Instead of seeing a bunch of stuff about the, the practice beating their chest about how wonderful they are, instead I read this great story about an experience of a patient and how her life was changed. The power in storytelling with social media is amazing. And, and you, again, you don't need to find this story every day. You find two or three of these a month, they have tremendous impact on your marketing effort. Let me show you a quick second story. This particular practice, Total Dental Care, <clears throat> started uh, a, doing six-month smile program in their practice. And Caitlin Morgan had a great experience with her six-month smile braces. Um, they posted, the practice actually posted this on their page and congratulated Caitlin, and it got some nice interaction, 37 likes uh, and, and a number of shares. One of those shares was Caitlin's husband, Mitchell Morgan. Now, remember what I said about the best place to have this kind of content appear is on personal pages, not on the business page. The business page is good too, but things get more viral traction when they're on a personal page. So by the practice invited Caitlin's husband, Mitchell, to share on his own page, which he did. And when he shared his wife's experience, 21 of their friends engaged with that content. Because remember, these are people that know and love Caitlin and her husband. These are friends, family members, coworkers, the people they go to, to church with, whoever they are. They're people that really care. So you get this nice little bit of engagement on the personal page there on the left, coupled with the engagement that the practice got on their business page. This is like a one-two punch. If you can get a patient to tell a story on their own social media channels, and then you share that on your channel, you have this great one-two punch opportunity, which greatly increases the reach of your content. Reach is such an important part of social media. Now, I don't want to bore you with a bunch of math, but I want to do one little tiny math equation just to make a point. If we take the 21 people that Mitch, uh, Mitchell Morgan engaged with on his personal page and add that to the 37 that engaged on the business business page, that's 58 people. If we times that by the average number of friends people have on Facebook, which worldwide is 338, that if you just do the simple math, it, there's potentially 20,000 people that could be exposed to this message. Now, I know that, for example, I live in Utah. I have friends on Facebook that live in Utah, but I have friends 
on Facebook that live all over the country. But statistically, 54% of our friends live in the same geographic area in which we live. So while not all 19,000 people are potential new patients for the practice, 54% of them are likely, are, are potential uh, new patients. So with just a little bit of thought, telling a little story could reach as many as 10,000 people. Now, I'm not suggesting that 10,000 people run over to the phone and call to make an appointment. That's not the point. <laughs> the point is that effective social media creates top of mind awareness and reach. And when we tell stories, it gives us this huge one-two punch opportunity. Idea number three, I want you to consider finding what we call a micro-influencer. Many of you are very familiar with what influences are on Instagram. If you're not, uh, influencers are people that have influence. They're people that have a lot of followers and some influencers have millions of followers. And if you want them to talk about your practice, then you gotta have a really thick checkbook because they might want a million dollars <laughs> to post something to their million fans. But there are what, what are called micro-influencers. Let me tell you about one of them. Uh, Kate Gross, an amazing dentist out in Kansas and, and just a, an all around great person and sweet, uh, sweet lady. If you look at her Instagram page, she does a great job of mixing in dentistry with her, the relationship she has with her patients and with her family. She talks about the things that she does. Uh, her, she talks about good health. She talks about the books that she reads. Um, but one of the things that she found recently is she found that she had what we call a micro influencer as a patient. And his name was Willie J. And William Jones was, is, is not a big influencer. He only has uh, under a thousand people that follow him. But guess what? A thousand people is still a thousand people. Remember, 54% of which probably live in the same area where Dr. Kate practices. She found Willie J who was interested in getting Invisalign treatment. And so she had made a little deal with Willie that if he'll once a week make a little video and talk about his experience in their practice with, with Invisalign, that she would offer a little discount to him to make it worth his while and help him build his audience of followers. These micro influencers, while they some have, you know, a thousand followers, but many of them have 10 or 15 or 20,000 followers. Um, here's, a, here's a little shot of what those videos look like. And if you wanted to go to Dr. Kate's uh, talks, that's her Instagram page. You can listen to some of those videos. Another example of someone that has more followers than that, uh, Raquel Peterson down in, in Arizona. She may just look like a, a regular mom, but she's also a micro influencer and she has a design uh, page. She's in, into real estate and interior design and she has nearly 10,000 followers. And if you look down through her posts on Instagram, the vast majority of them are about real estate and about um, interior design. But there's one that really stands out as different as you can see. And that's the one where she talks about her smile makeover. And Dr. Brian Harris uh, in Arizona helped her with her smile. And she goes on and on talking about what an incredible experience it was to work with Dr. Brian and with his team. These are opportunities that prior to having these social media tools, we could have never done. And, and that's what makes them so effective. It, and the, the opportunity to spread the good word about your practice through storytelling in this way is really amazing. Fourth idea, sometimes just keep it super simple. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't have to be as complex as finding a micro influencer and figuring out a way to leverage them. Sometimes just put your arms around a patient and make them a patient of the day. What's funny, sometimes I'll have a practice, they'll say, well, Jack, you don't understand. All of our patients are old. We practice in this part of town where everybody's old. Nobody uses social media, blah, blah, blah. It's not about whether or not John and Martha here use social media. It's about putting your arms around this human component, this part of your culture, the way you treat people and making them a rock star for a day. This is a story. This may not be a story about dentistry, but it's a story about your love for the community in which you serve and for your patients. Keep in mind, John and Martha here, or whatever their names are, I'm not sure if they're John and Martha, <laughs> but remember, they, they live in, in, they've probably lived in that community for 50 years. They have grandchildren and great-grandchildren and children and aunts and uncles and friends, and they know a lot of people in town. 
And if you can highlight them and make them the stars and make them the story, this kind of content does amazingly well. Again, you're opening up the top of that funnel like Steve talked about a few minutes ago. You're making the funnel much wider when you reach people through these, these amazing tools. And one more example of keeping it simple, at Slave Lake Dental, they really understand their, and know their patients. One of their patients, uh, a gal by the name of Micaiah, has a daughter named Rachel who wants to become a neurosurgeon someday. <laughs> so one day the doctor said, hey, Rachel, why don't, I'm gonna teach you how to do a surgical stitch because I know someday you're gonna be a neurosurgeon. Now, they, the team may have discussed that during the morning opportunity meeting that Steve talked about. They knew that Micaiah was bringing in Rachel. What an opportunity to have Micaiah shoot a little live video on Facebook of, of the doctor showing Rachel how to do a little surgical stitch. And then Micaiah posted it on her personal page and the practice went in and shared that to their page. What a great, simple, sweet little story that again, endears your business through social media to the public that you serve. Take these opportunities, look for them. You know who your patients are. You know who's coming in this week. You know where those stories could be told. Do, do you have a patient whose son or daughter is the captain of the soccer team at the high school? Put your arm around them and shoot a little live video and say, hey, we are so proud of your son, Fred, and, and the great job he's doing over at the high school on the soccer team. These are stories to be told through social media. And finally, idea number five, leverage your charitable efforts. Steve made a little bit of reference to uh, Smiles for Life. Uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. Let me show you one other uh, quick idea. During Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we have such great traction with all of our clients. We, we provide them with some props <clears throat> and we encourage them to get their patients to take photos and publish those to their social media channels and tag the practice. And then many of our practices will, they'll donate a few dollars to breast cancer research for every photo that gets published on personal pages and their practice gets tagged. What an easy way and simple way to not only, to not only make the, these folks feel good, that they're doing something good in the world, but also to communicate that to your team. When Daniel here over on the left posted uh, this to his personal page, again, 13 of his friends interacted with that and, and basically patted Daniel on the back and said, way to go, Daniel. So it, it, it's a win for everybody when you can get patients to tell even the simplest story about breast cancer awareness on their page. Smiles for Life, well, we could talk the rest of the hour about Smiles for Life, and I don't want to do that, but I know many of you in the audience know about Smiles for Life, and if you don't, Gosh, you need to you need to check out um, and be part of it. If not this year, next year, we are having so much success by using micro influencers to talk about Smiles for Life, and and it's really helping uh, tens of thousands of dollars more to be raised for for charities. And and we're doing it because they tell the story. They get whitened, and then they tell the story to their followers, and word spreads. So charity work is a, an amazing place. To, to get this kind of leverage. So try all five of these ideas. And, and just in closing, going back to my little sketch that I did, um, if you have questions, like if, if things are not working, let's say that you're spending a lot of money on ads or they're at the top of this diagram where I say advertising, you're spending a ton of money on SEO or PPC or ads or whatever, and it's just not working. And you're asking yourself, why, why is this not working better? My advice, and I see it all the time to, to really help a practice, is step back one step. Or in other words, go down one level in this triangle. Look at what you're doing in your social media. I like to talk about it as the three R's. How are your relationships, your reputation, and your reach going in terms of your social media? And, and if, you, if you feel like that's going well, then go down one step deeper and look at the culture and the practice. Are you doing the things that Steve is going to be talking about today and that he's already talked about? If, if you're not building that part, then you go down one step further down. And, and each time you go down, you get a different perspective on why your marketing is or is not working as well as it should. And finally, 
if those if none of those things seem to be working right maybe you need to take even a little deeper dive and examine your product and your product of course is two part it's it's dentistry clinical dentistry and it's the way in which you run your practice and manage your practice if there are some fundamental problems there that you need to work on they may be hampering your marketing success so go one step deeper one level deeper and and that really helps some practices to get a clear perspective on what to do next and finally in closing uh, again just a little word about the dental Dig digital marketing conference here in utah october 3rd and 4th uh, this year's theme uh, is how powerfully integrated digital marketing transforms and grows your dental practice all of the things that we talk about today the things i've talked about and the things that steve has talked about and will continue to talk about during this hour are going to be brought together in an integrated way and taught at the conference um, it's two information packed days it's a very rapid format ted style format the venue's beautiful we've got amazing dynamic educators that are going to be teaching um, it's a different kind of conference than we had the first four years there actually are not are not going to be any vendors at the meeting um, it's just simply going to be pure education we make it very affordable and very practical for any practice in the country to be there and you'll of course receive 12 hours of ce credit uh, i just wanted to give this to him and perhaps uh, steve's going to talk about this at the end i think he already gave you the url but if you want to learn more uh, go to dentalmarketingconference.com and at on the home page uh, of the website you can see all the topics that are going to be talked about in ted style format and if you are either a crown council member already or if you're a my social practice client there is a discount code available on the tuition for the conference and to find to get that discount code you could just use one of those two um, uh, email addresses there if you're a crown council member email success at crowncouncil.com if you're my social practice client jack at my social practice.com and we'll get those discount codes uh, to you and finally before I turn the time back to Steve um, if you're if you're kind of wondering where you are in your practice in terms of your social media effectiveness to, to be able to kind of leverage some of the things I talked about over the last few minutes we have this fun little five-minute assessment it's a self-assessment that you can take and if you'd like to do that uh, our team created a little quick link to that assessment it's uh, it's a bitly which you know is kind of a shortened uh, URL it's just bit dot ly forward slash my name Jack and the word assessment and I think at the very end of the webinar uh, we'll probably put that on screen again as well so if you want to take five minutes just kind of see where you are where you are um, then that will kind of email you back a little report that you can use to to kind of assess where you're at and some things maybe you can do to do a better job Steve back to you <laughs> well done thank you Jack and uh, thanks for some great five great tips and uh, for the assessment as well. Uh, next, uh, we're gonna talk uh, about some additional systems that you can use daily in your practice to make sure you're harvesting all of the opportunities that you have, that you have every day. As Jack mentioned, uh, the foundation of all of this, obviously a good product and your culture of success. So as a reminder, uh, we've talked about referrals and reviews uh, this is a new uh, download that you can get from Total Patient Service on how to ask for referrals and the verbal skills for referrals and online reviews. So you can get that. Uh, it's a free download, uh, totalpatientservice.com forward slash referrals uh, is available. As well as in keeping the culture of success alive and well in your practice, uh, this is another free service from Total Patient Service, which is to make sure you end your morning meeting every day on a high note, because that is the launch point for your successful day. And we recommend that you do that with an action-oriented uh, thought for the day. Uh, we send out those uh, every week, and you can get those again from Total Patient Service, totalpatientservice.com forward slash morning and subscribe to those so that you have those each week. So it is a, an ongoing effort. Uh, next, 
Let's talk about tools that you use on a daily basis to make sure that you're widening the neck of the funnel. Based on our research, we know that there are all kinds of opportunities every day that are missed in most dental practices where new patient numbers can be even greater based on the opportunities that are just sitting there every day. So here's two tools that we highly recommend that every practice use so that you widen the neck of the funnel to create more active patient opportunities. Uh, this is what we call the new patient scorecard. And basically what it is, yes, it is handwritten. Uh, there, there are a lot of different ways to digitize this. Uh, this is a discipline for, begin for as you start out that's great to do just in writing. And this is uh, an opportunity every time you interact with a potential patient, uh, especially those that are calling in, then you write down their name, which is the most important piece of information that you gather uh, for a new patient opportunity. Uh, their phone number, which you should get as one of the initial things in case you de get disconnected, you can write that down. And then it's simply the result, did they schedule or not? And if not, why not? Uh, so this is in an effort just to track all of the opportunities that come in every day uh, where you have the opportunity then <clears throat> to talk to them and converse, but track your results. How many of those potential new patient opportunities are actually being converted into new patient, uh, scheduled new patient appointments? So this would be any inquiry that comes into your office. What are your hours? Are you taking new patients? Do you whiten teeth? Uh, how much is a cleaning? Uh, any of those type of inquiries that you get from uh, potential new patients, you're gonna log these so that you can track your performance. We like to keep score. And uh, I ask in our seminars around the country all the time, what would you consider to be a winning score in terms of opportunities versus scheduled appointments? And I'm gonna show you before we get done today, how to leverage those opportunities so that you can schedule even more patients than you have calling your practice or <clears throat> emailing or sending text messages. You can actually schedule more than actually inquire. So this is a tool we highly recommend. It's very easy. You just keep track of this uh, on a name by name, opportunity by opportunity basis. A uh, second tool is that you have a format for your conversations with potential new patients. We like to call this new patient relationship form, uh, but it is a guide that walks through exactly what questions you'll ask potential new patients so that that conversation has a flow to it. <clears throat> there are opportunities every day. And so if you have a format or a system that will guide you through that process, then you'll have a, a much better chance of being able to schedule new patients. So those are two, two tools we highly recommend is the call log, as well as making sure that you have some format that's been trained by everyone who answers the phone that guides you through the conversation that will dramatically increase your uh, chances of scheduling that new patient. We're opening the neck of the funnel. Now, this goes without saying, but it has to be reinforced. A few reminders. Even when you're on the phone, you smile even though they can't hear you. That is the first contact and the first relationship you'll have with uh, the patient or the potential new patient and act as if you're standing eye to eye, face to face. We have practices all over the country that keep mirrors in front of every telephone as a reminder to be engaging and smile so they can hear your smile. Uh, be pleasant, even though you got a million things going on, this is perhaps the most important contact that that person will ever have with your practice. And so make it easy for them to engage, be pleasant. And there are a few things that you should never ask. And here's a couple of them. Never ask, are you a new patient? Uh, that is the worst question to ask somebody because if they're an existing patient, then you've straight out of the gate, let them know that you don't know who they are. So never ask somebody if they're new. Instead, you could ask them, how long has it been since we've seen you? Or how long has it been since you've been to our practice? 
err on the side of familiarity. Always assume that there's someone you know. So instead of are you a new patient, it is how long has it been since we've seen you. Uh, the other one is never ask them if they have insurance. That is the most frequently asked first question uh, that potential new patients get asked when they, they contact the office uh, the first time is, is the insurance uh, is the leading question. That should be a question that's asked way, way, way down the line, uh, but never a leading question. So later on in the conversation, you might ask, are there any benefits that you'd like to take advantage of uh, when you come in? That would be a better question down the road, but never lead with, do you have insurance? If you want to be better than other practices, you have to be willing to do things that other practices don't do. This 90 plus percent of practices across the country that just leave things as they are without any training or any thought will ask, do you have insurance as the first question when someone calls the practice? Don't ask it. That one is off the table. So greet with a smile, ask good, intelligent, interesting questions. And the whole objective here is to convert an inquiry into a scheduled appointment at a much, much higher rate. <clears throat> so here would be a couple of things, gathering information by asking the, the patient qualifying questions. So some typical questions might be, uh, how long has it been since you've been to the dentist? What is the most important thing that we could, we could do for you at your first visit? If they ask uh, simple things like how much is a cleaning or how much simple price inquiry things you might ask, what is the most important thing to you about getting your teeth cleaned? In other words, I'm looking beyond the procedure to find out what it is that they're really looking for. You're building a relationship here and relationships are based on questions and interaction. So build that interaction and with a few very uh, well-placed questions, you can create a great relationship. To be able to convert is to be proactive, not reactive. What we find is that most people, when they call an office the first time, it is a very reactive situation where the prospective new patient is the one asking all the questions and then they hang up because no one was proactive in taking control of the conversation. You control a conversation by asking questions. You dominate it by talking. So you open the neck of the funnel by being the one who is in control by asking questions about what they're really interested in, why they called today, what the most important thing is that they want to accomplish, what concerns they have, and how you can genuinely serve them to meet their needs. Scheduling. Quick choice, quick uh, suggestion, and everybody's familiar with this, although not commonly practiced, is always offer two choices. Appointment contro book control is driven by the questions that you ask. So you might ask which day of the week, Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday, whatever days you're open, which day of the week is most convenient for you? Would morning or afternoon be better? Would five would, would eight o'clock or 10 o'clock be better? I'm always giving choices based on what is available that we have available in the schedule. I never off them, offer them opportunities for things that are not available. So with appointment book in view, always give choices of what is available that might accommodate their schedule. So always, always, always be looking for opportunities to invite them to schedule. Uh, in, in the course of the conversation, there's always opportunities to schedule the appointment. Open the neck of the funnel and make it easy for patients to schedule. Ask them to schedule every step along the way. There are literally tens of thousands of opportunities that are missed every day just because we don't ask. So uh, here's how you leverage your new patient opportunities. Uh, anybody who schedules a, a, an appointment in your practice should also be asked after they schedule that appointment, who else should we go ahead and schedule today while it's convenient 
and we have you on the phone. Who else should we go ahead and schedule? In other words, don't just take for granted the fact that they scheduled, <clears throat> but we know that anybody who schedules a new patient appointment, they're probably not the only one in their household that needs a dentist. So it begs the question, who else should we go ahead and schedule? <clears throat> the best practices that we work with consistently schedule more new patient appointments than they have new patient calls. Let me say that again. <clears throat> the best practices we work with schedule more new patient appointments than they have new patient calls. How do they do that? By simply asking those who schedule an appointment, who else should we go ahead and schedule today while we're talking and it's convenient? Always, always ask. That way you can get a much higher ratio of calls to scheduled appointments if you just simply ask. Here's common questions that become a barrier to scheduling. This one gets asked tens of thousands of times a day in dental practices. Patients call up, prospective, patient, prospective patients call up and ask how much is a cleaning. That's a trap that most people follow that logic and start giving prices and then the conversation ends. Most patients don't know what to ask. And so this becomes the default question. How much is a cleaning? If you follow a good protocol, if that were the question, then I would find out the patient's name, how they heard about the practice, what's the most important thing to them about having their teeth clean, and then I'm gonna give them a very accurate answer uh, based on the exact type of service that they're looking for. So the response to this question is always, thanks so much for calling. Again, my name is Steve and yours is Jack. <clears throat> and Jack, how long has it been since we've seen you? How long has it been uh, since you've been to the dentist? How did you hear about our practice? I'm gonna ask three or four questions and then say I'm gonna give you a very accurate answer to your question. If I can ask you a couple of, of questions to make sure that uh, we have everything that we need to know in order to give you exactly what you're looking for. So the key to this is answering the question with a question. This is another trap, a barrier to entry. Do you take my insurance? Well, obviously the response to this is going to be, what insurance benefits do you have? And then we never make insurance the primary reason, but we have worked and researched and, and worked on this particular question because it can be such a barrier to most people. And the, the response to this, even if they have insurance benefits with a plan, maybe you're not in network with them, you can always say, you know, that's a, that's a really good question. We happen to have a lot of patients with your same benefits. We don't happen to be in network with your, uh, with your particular insurance. Would you like to know why our patients with your benefits come to our practice? Would you like to know why they come to our practice? You've never had a patient say no. <laughs> they, they will always want to know. You're being honest and then you're informing them of what you provide in your practice that your patients, the reason your patients come to your practice, and then you ask them and inform them how you're gonna handle their benefits and give them the opportunity to schedule. So the answer to this one is never no. <clears throat> you don't say, do you take my insurance? You never say no if it's a plan that, that you don't take. You always say, we have a lot of patients that have those same benefits, if indeed you do. You have to have patients that have those benefits. We have a lot of patients that have those same benefits uh, would you like to know why they choose our practice where we don't happen to be in network would you, with them? Would you like to know why they come here? So that's, again, that's one that needs to be rehearsed and practiced uh, so that you know exactly how to respond to it when you get it because it comes in every day. Uh, this is another common question that becomes a barrier. I just want my teeth clean. They don't want the exam, they don't want x-rays, they just want their teeth cleaned. Well, this begs the question, why? So again, I would respond to this demand with questions. So it sounds like getting your teeth cleaned is very important to me. Can you share with me what's the most important thing to you about getting your teeth cleaned? Find out what they want and why it is important to them, and then you can give them a way to do it. Sometimes it's finances. Maybe they just recently had an exam. 
you don't know until you ask. So those are some of the most commonly asked questions that end up being a barrier that closes the neck of the funnel that responding to those appropriately will open the neck of the funnel so that you can have more patients scheduling an appointment. Uh, here's the last one. Are you open on Saturday? Are you open on Fridays? Are you open on the weekends? When they ask about times when you're not open, many times the response is, well, nope, end of conversation, instead of asking good questions to find out what their concerns are. So if someone said, are you open Saturday? I would say, it sounds like you have a, a busy schedule during the week. Can you tell me a little bit about your schedule? So then I would then find out what their scheduling constraints are and then find a time when we could work mutually together. So it may not be about Saturday. It may be about a busy schedule and, and they don't know all the other options. So again, ask, discover, find out exactly what's going on so that then you can find a solution that will work for everyone. Next, another way to make sure you keep the funnel open is, and this is, this is a huge, huge deal for the culture of the practice proven. If you want to increase your new patient show rate, the doctor does the welcome call to the new patient the day before they come in. A simple message, welcome to the practice. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, if there's anything that we can do to make your visit more comfortable, here's our number, give us a call. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock. It's the doctor that makes the call. You'll still do all the other things you do, but a, a, a message from the person that they are scheduled with will create a huge, huge increase in the number of new patients that show up for their first appointment. You're opening the neck of the funnel. Bottom line here is if you're going to manage your results of opening the neck of the funnel, you have to measure them. We've given you some, some suggestions today. <clears throat> the, the tracking, the new patient tracking tool of how many patients actually scheduled versus how many called. And then finally, uh, to make sure that you keep track of your, your ratio, that'll help you see your ratio of opportunities to schedule appointments. And our standard is 130%, that you should have 130% <clears throat> calls to schedule appointments ratio if you do all these things to open the funnel. So here's a, a couple of reminders as we wrap up. Embrace your purpose which is to create happy paying patients that pay more than it costs to serve them and who repeat and refer. And Jack, I would add, and post great social media and stories about you uh, all over the internet. Uh, follow proven systems to, to open the neck of the funnel, train and practice. Uh, these are not things that you can do just off the top of your head. You have to have system to do it and then measure your results every day so that you can see your progress and what your results actually are. Uh, a couple of reminders. We've talked about the uh, Dental Marketing Conference, uh, the, the Dental Digital Marketing Conference. As Jack mentioned, you can learn more about that at dentalmarketingconference.com. Uh, as always, uh, the basic training that we consider for any practice for case acceptance skills is the Total Immersion course at uh, Total Patient Service. You can learn more about that at totalpatientservice.com. <clears throat> and I believe that is it, Jack. Again, uh, let me go back to your, uh, your offer for your uh, free assessment, which I believe is right there. I'll throw that up on the screen. Uh, so Jack's offered a free social media self-assessment uh, there at the website that is on the screen. Uh, a couple of questions, Jack, to wrap up. Uh, here is the first one uh, regarding the Dental Digital Marketing Conference that just came in. Um, who should go to the Dental Digital Marketing Conference? Of the team members, is this a whole team experience? Who do you recommend attends? the Dental Digital Marketing Conference? Um, great question. Based on uh, the, the first four years of our conference, um, the, the practices that seem to have the, the get the greatest value from the conference 
is if the decision maker in the practice, which is typically the, the doctor, um, and whoever handles the marketing in the practice, uh, that those two people come together. And here's why. If, the, if only the doctor comes, sometimes it's hard to distill everything that he or she learns during those two days back to the marketing person and so much gets lost in the translation if the uh, if only the marketing person comes then it's much harder for them to again convey the value of the things that they've learned and and encourage um, the, the team and the doctor to do that without them there when they have that little bit of synergy between two people um, they just seem to take so much more away from the conference. So some practices bring their whole team, but at minimum, I think it's best to have the decision maker and the person that handles the marketing. Uh, next question, Jack, uh, how much is it? What's the tuition? We, we have kept the tuition down to keep, uh, so every practice can uh, attend that would like to be there. The tuition is $495 per person for the full two days. And uh, again, if you are a My Social Practice client already, or you are a member of the Crown Council, there's actually a $200 uh, discount to that tuition. And you just uh, send that email to uh, either us or the Crown Council to get that discount code, uh, which takes it from 495 to 295 per person. Perfect. And then uh, finally, there's uh, many people listening that have been before. Um, how is the conference different uh, this year than, than in previous years? I, I, think, I think the biggest difference is that we've always tried to walk this fine line between having educators speak and having vendors uh, speak who, who provide a lot of value, but of course also have um, you know, a product to sell. And so while we've had, we've had good success over the last few years, we felt like we wanted to kind of zig the other direction while um, with this particular year's conference. And so we actually uh, will not have any vendor, um, any vendors in the room. There's no floor with, with booths and so forth, uh, but it'll strictly be uh, the educators that are educating. I think that's one of the biggest, the biggest differences. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, a couple of other questions here regarding our webinar today. Yes, it has been recorded. It will be posted later today at crowncouncil.org along with uh, a link to the resources that we've mentioned today. <clears throat> so you can go to crowncouncil.org in the training section and then in the webinars tab, this will be the first thing listed later today. Uh, probably within the next hour or so, we'll have that posted along with all of the, uh, all the resources that we've talked about today with links to those. Uh, including your survey, Jack. We'll have a link there as well uh, if everyone wants links to that. Jack, thanks again for joining us today. Uh, just as a, uh, a heads up, moving forward, our next webinar will be Tuesday, May 21st, entitled 50 Ways to Pay, Expanding Your Financial Options to Increase Treatment Acceptance. <clears throat> this one will is, is one of our most popular topics and will dramatically increase your financial arrangements and case acceptance success. So we'll be sending information out on that May 21st, 50 Ways to Pay. Thanks again, Jack, for being with us today. Thank, Thank you, you Steve. All for you bet, and for joining us today for our webinar. Have a great day.